Well, obviously, in terms of the energy crisis, there's no easy way out. The benefits of the price cap or indeed Labour's policies is the simplicity of it. If you contrast it, say, to earlier this year in the UK, the current government has already expended about £37 billion in three different fiscal packages. And lots of those, that money has been aimed at helping people out in terms of the energy crisis. Uh, but many of those help, areas of help have been very piecemeal. So the benefit of the price cap and Labour's approach is the simplicity. What's the argument against it? Well, in a nutshell, you can only intervene in one way, allow the price mechanism to work and try and stop it, or you try and ration the supply. What is happening here is that you basically have a price cap. Therefore, there needs to be a big transfer payment. The transfer payment is to the customers at the end of the day. The price cap is not targeting it in any way, shape or form. It's a universal benefit to any user, uh, as opposed to the current government's approach, which has been tried to be timely, targeted and indeed temporary. And the temporary aspect is the other part that you've touched on. When the price cap ends, or indeed when the government's current transfer payments end, what happens? Then there's a big adjustment or you have to continue it. So in a nutshell, there's no easy way out of it. The price cap is simple, but it's not timely in the sense of being targeted. And it basically still leads to a problem at the end of the six month period in the case in the UK. Obviously, you mentioned France and Argentina. Um, look, in Argentina, inflation is rampant uh, on a scale much more than here. Um, the price mechanism never really works fully in Argentina. The danger we have here in the UK is that you don't want to start, in my mind, to intervene and interfere too much with the price mechanism. Whether we like it or not, the price going up is the correct way of things working. But there's also, of course, Gerard, the whole question of supply. And very, very little has been said about supply, other than, of course, Keir Starmer wants to put more taxes on companies that could invest in future supply, which I don't approve of. But there's the other question here, isn't there? Yes, price, of course, is very important. But there's also strategy. There's also something called the national interest. And a very eagle-eyed viewer of this programme just reminded me overnight that Northumbrian Water is owned by a Hong Kong-based infrastructure company, as indeed is Southern Water. Uh, you know, remarkably, even UK power networks are 80% owned by Chinese companies. And I could go on and on and read you a list as long as your arm. So two points here. One... Why are we not talking more about future supply of energy? And two, does it make sense in strategic terms to allow Chinese companies to buy so much of our energy and critical infrastructure? All right, two different issues. The general point is that there are strategic industries, but we should basically be encouraging greater investment, whether it's from the public sector or ideally from the private sector. If it's from the private sector, then you need to avoid things like price caps. You need to avoid um, punitive taxation, such as windfall tax, and you need to avoid retrospective taxation. You would like to have predictable uh, taxation and also basically make sure that people know so they can plan ahead and invest. Clearly, sometimes you do need to take uh, prohibitive action, but that has to be the exceptional situation and ideally avoid it. When it comes to China, I think the big issue with China is this, yeah. that we need to have a mature, robust relationship with China. I would argue for a clear red line where on one side of the red line, we have defense, security, intelligence areas. And in many respects, they're off ground, shall we say, because they are basically very sensitive. But on the other side of the red line, it needs to be made clear. We should allow business finance uh, to continue shall we say, as normal, as long as those areas in which companies from overseas, whether it's Chinese or indeed from other countries, can invest, are not seen as being um, of problematic areas to the UK in the sense of defence, security or intelligence. Now, the whole area of energy is particularly important. If we look back to two, three years ago in China, we can actually learn the lesson from China itself. At the height of their problems with tr President Trump in terms of the trade relationship, China announced what was called the dual circulation policy. They felt that they needed to have self-sufficiency in three areas, food, fuel, 
and technology. So maybe we should learn from them. Yeah. Also, we should learn from the states about yeah. the need to invest more. And we should also learn from our own experience that the market mechanism does work and we should be investing more. 